Okay, I'll get started. So today we continue our grand tour of properties, characteristics of light. Uh, we're moving on from uh, images of objects formed by reflection in mirrors. We're moving on to images of objects formed by refraction at boundaries between air glass um, uh, water, water glass, or air, air and water. So the topics I wanted to cover today are really two main topics. One is images of objects that are formed by a single refraction, and we'll learn how to sketch, draw the ray, ray tracing, for images formed by a single refraction, and we'll look at illustrations of that. And then the second one is images formed by lenses, which involve two refractions when the light goes in and out of the lens. And we'll learn how to draw, ray trace that, and the equations, the formulas for that. And we'll look at some examples too. Um, just, just to stress, um, in, in the single refraction, in the in the lens refraction, we're, we'll be doing both the ray tracing and the formulas to describe the images of the objects. And just to stress again that this understanding of refraction uh, by, by lenses um, was the basis for developing the telescope, for developing the microscope, which led to, which was, you know, big breakthroughs in, in, in modern biology and um, modern, modern astronomy. Okay, so there's really one concept, one ingredient that we're using in everything in today's class. It's the law of refraction. And so I just wanted to remind you, as we go about using the law of refraction, I just wanted to remind you of the law of refraction. Remember that refraction is bending of light when light travels from one medium to another medium. Remember that optical media are characterized by a quantity number called the refractive index. Um, here I've labeled it the uh, refractive index of the incident medium, Ni, the refractive index of the uh, uh, outgoing medium, Nr. Here we see a picture of the law of refraction that a light ray traveling from the incident medium to the refractive medium, from the incoming to the outgoing medium, is, is, its path is bent, is deflected. Uh, and we can characterize that deflection by noting the incident angle, that we call that theta i with respect to the normal, to the boundary, and the refracted angle, we call that theta r with respect to the boundary, and the law of refraction that describes quantitatively how much or how little the light is bent is down here. It simply says that if you take the product of the refractive index and the sign of the angle on the incident side of the boundary, that's equal to the product of the refractive index and the sign of the outgoing refracted angle on the other side of the boundary. So those two products on either side of the boundary are equal to one another. That causes light to be, if it travels from lower refractive index towards higher refractive index, it's going to be bent towards the normal, which is the picture here. Uh, and if light was to travel from higher refractive index to lower refractive index, that law causes the light to be bent away from, from the normal. So it describes precisely the uh, bending, the refraction of the light rays, and it describes that in some cases the light is bent away, some cases the light is bent uh, towards the normal. Okay, so let's go, uh, go on and, and use this law. 
So firstly, ex examples, illustrations of images formed by a single refraction at a flat, planar surface. So this is the simplest case we could dream up. We're just going to have one refraction and it's going to be a, a perfectly flat, planar surface. So here's a picture of that situation. Here's a sketch of that situation um, in which uh, I, I'm drawing a uh, situation in which we have some sort of object, you know, a tree, uh, you, me, or just anything. And we're going to form an image of that object. Uh, so an image of the tree, or, or you, or me, or whatever it is, um, via a single refraction at a flat surface, a planar surface. So to explain this picture, uh, over here on the right-hand side, is one optical medium in blue. Over here on the left-hand side is a second optical medium in white. Uh, right down the center here, this is the boundary, the interface between the two media. The two media are labeled by their refractive indices, N1 and N2. In this particular picture here, the light is starting on the right-hand side, originating on the right-hand side, and it's traveling towards the left-hand side. Uh, so I'm going to call this the front side over here on the um, right-hand side. That's, that means that's where the light started from. I'm going to call over here on the left-hand side, this is going to be the back side, that's where the light is going to. So on the front side, that's where the incident rays live. On the back side, that's where the refracted rays live. Okay. So let's see if we can figure out why a object placed here, so this is the location of the object, and this is us representing the object with this vertical arrow located on the optical axis, why it produces an image that's located over here. This magenta arrow is the image, I've labeled it I, and uh, I've drawn it again as an arrow on the optical axis. Let's see if we can figure out how, how that worked by ray tracing, by tracing refracted rays. So I'm actually just going to trace two rays in this situation. Uh, that will allow us to figure out the position of the image, knowing the position of the object, and actually also the size of the image, knowing the, the size of the object. So let's, let's look at these two rays. Let's start with the simplest one here. This horizontal one, traveling from the right to the left. This one's traveling parallel to the optical axis. This one strikes the boundary between the two media at an incident angle that's zero degrees, because it's normal to the surface. It emerges from the boundary also at zero degrees. This is a special case. Light striking a boundary at an incident of angle of zero degrees isn't bent, isn't refracted, it emerges at zero degrees. So this light just goes straight through the boundary, unbent, undeflected, unrefracted. Um, and so that's one ray that we can draw. And it's very easy to ray to draw because it just starts pa out parallel to the optical axis and just carries th on through the boundary parallel to the optical axis. A uh, second ray. So I pictured a second ray that headed up both traveling from the right to the left, but also going up on the screen here. And it strikes the boundary. It's now striking the boundary at some non-zero angle to the normal. So this light ray will be, will be um, refracted, will be, its direction will be changed. And because I've drawn a picture in which over here on the right, the refractive index is larger. Over here on the left, the refractive index is smaller. Maybe this is water. Maybe this is air. This light ray is going to be bent away from the normal. So when light travels from higher to lower refractive index, you get bent away. When light travels from lower to higher, you get bent towards the normal. So this is bent away. And so here's the refracted light ray. And based on these two light rays here, I'm just going to construct where I think the image is. I'm constructing the 
location of the image by imagining my eye collecting those light rays, you know, that light, light goes in through the whatever there is, onto the retina, uh, and then I'm going to interpret. I'm going to interpret where those light rays appear to come from. The two light rays of, I, I've drawn have come from the same point of the object, so I'm going to interpret that they come from the same point uh, on, on the image, and so I'm tracing back this light ray here, the one that went upstairs, uh, tracing back this light ray here, the one that went horizontal, they cross here, this is the location of the image. And so this is how, by drawing the refractions of these two rays, I reconstructed the image. There's a few things you might want to notice about the image in this single refraction on a flat planar surface. One thing uh, about the image is that it's, it's neither magnified nor minified, it's the same size. And that's a characteristic of refraction by a planar surface. A another characteristic that you might notice is that the image is closer to the boundary than the object was to the boundary. So the magenta image here is closer to this vertical line that represents the boundary than the, um, the green object over here. That, that happens when you travel from higher refractive index to lower refractive index. The reverse will happen when you travel from lower to higher refractive index and it happens because in this case when we refract as we emerge from the higher refractive index medium we're bent away from the normal. If we emerged into a higher refractive index we will be bent towards the normal and that would cause the image to be uh, further away from the boundary than the object. So this is another characteristic here. Um, we, we, we might also mention the other characteristics are that um, the image is upright, it's the same way up as the object. The image is also a, 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 a virtual image, not a real image. It looks like the light is coming from the location of the image, but the light isn't actually coming, uh, passing through that location. I added to the sketch two equations, a pair of equations. These equations tell us about the, the location of the image in terms of the location of the object. They tell us about the, um, the size of the image in terms of the, the, the size of the object. And these two equations, I'm not deriving them, but they just come from a little bit of trigonometry of right angle triangles that we actually drew when construct, constructing this image of this object. So the, that geometry leads to these two equations down here. I should say that these two equations are actually approximate. They're not actually exact. So they are approximate, they are not exact, but we'll be using these equations when, when figuring out the, the locations of images of objects for single refractions. Um, the first one says that the image position is equal to the negative of the ratio of the two refractive indices times the object position. So that's the first equation. It's pretty compact and straightforward. It's got the object position on the right-hand side, the image position on the left-hand side. It's got this ratio of the refractive indices. This ratio of the refractive indices in the equation is what's going to make the image closer if n1 is larger and n2 is smaller, which was the situation we pictured. It would make the image further away than the object if n2 was larger and N1 was smaller. So this, this little term here, this little ratio, does that job of putting the image closer or further away depending on whether you're going to higher or lower refractive index. That's how it works. You notice the minus sign. So if we have a positive image, sorry, positive object position, positive P, um, this equation here will give us a, a negative Q. 
For this case of single refraction, a positive P means that you're in this region on the right where the light started from. A negative Q also means that you're in this region on the right where the light started from. Positive P for a single refraction, and actually for a refraction with lenses too, positive P is over here in the region where the light starts from. Positive Q would be over here in this region where the light goes to. Since our image and our object are both in the region where the light starts from, P is positive, Q is negative. Uh, finally, there's the magnification. In this particular case of a refraction, single reflection at a flat surface, the magnification is one. It's kind of like the magnification of a flat planar mirror. That was also one. But it's different in that, in the case of the mirror, the, the image was the same distance behind the mirror that the object was in front of the mirror. In the case of the single refraction at a planar flat surface, then the image can be closer than the object or further away than the object, depending on the two refractive indices of the two materials. Okay, let's look at an example, an illustration of this. Um, so, here I am at the ocean, and here's a shark. And I'm looking down at the shark, and I'm thinking, um, how close is the shark? And the shark is also interested in me, and is thinking, how close is the person? So we're going to figure out um, how close the image of the shark is to the surface of the water, based on our understanding of, of refraction at a single flat planar surface. And we're also going to think from the shark's perspective, how close is the person in the atmosphere to the, to the surface of the water. So we're going to think about, think about those two cases. To give it some numbers, um, look over here, I've labeled the refractive index of air is essentially one. We know it's slightly bigger than one, but one is good enough here. The refractive index of water is 1.33. Uh, and then I've imagined that I'm half a meter above the surface of the water, and the shark is half a meter below the surface of the water. These are the real distances that I am above and the shark is below the water. So these are the object distances from the surface. Okay, so question is, after all that, how close do I see the shark? First question. And then how close does the shark see me? Second question. Well, we're just going to use this equation here. Remember, this is the relationship between the position of the image Q and the position of the object P. Uh, in terms of the refractive indices of the, the two different materials, uh, we're going to use it twice because we're going to use it down here on the right-hand side. We're also going to use it for the shark. And again, this will be the, the position of the object that the shark is looking at, that's me, and this will be the uh, position of the image of me. So we're going to use the equation twice, but one from the perspective of the person, one from the perspective of the shark. So let's, let's start with the, um, the, the, sh the person's perspective. Um, so for the person's perspective, the light is from the shark is starting in the water, and it's traveling to the atmosphere, the air. So it's traveling from higher refractive index, the light is emerging from the shark, and it's going to travel into the air, lower refractive index. So when we look at this equation from the person's perspective, P is the loca true location of the shark, that's the object position, Q is the image location of the shark, N1, that's going to be the, um, the refractive index of where the light started from, which is water, N2 is going to be the refractive index of where the light is going to, that's the atmosphere. And so I clarified that there, that N1 is water, uh, N2 is air, from the perspective of the person looking at the shark. At that point I just filled in all the numbers, right? And because the refractive index of the air is smaller than the refractive index of the water. The light went from 
higher refractive index to lower refractive index, this means that the shark appears closer. So I'm even more scared than I originally was. It looks like it's just less than 0.4 meters away. That's not, that's not far from the surface of the water. Gosh. Um, OK, what about shark? So uh, now we move down to the bottom right over here. We're going to use exactly the same equation, but from the perspective of the shark, from the uh, alt, uh, uh, sort of mirror refraction uh, yeah, perspective. Um, so now P is the object position. That's I'm the object. So it's my true position uh, above the uh, air-water boundary. Uh, Q is the p location of my image. Uh, and then N1 and N2 are the two refractive indices of the two materials. Uh, remember, N1 is where we start and N2 is where we're going to. In this case, the light is starting in air, so N1 is going to be air this time, and the light is going to water, so N2 is going to be um, the, the refractive index of the water. So these have now reversed because the light direction is reversed. It's no longer going from air to water to air. It's going from air to water. This ratio now of the two refractive indices is now bigger than 1. It's 1.33 over 1. And so it's bigger than 1. And so when I multiply the uh, object position, my position above the surface of the water, uh, the image is going to be, be found further away. So I look further away to the shark. So the shark sees me as further away. Anyway, that's an example of ref reflection by a single flat surface. It's an example of light traveling towards higher refractive index, towards lower refractive index. It's an example ha of how the image for moves closer or further away from the surface than the object, depending on the two refractive indices. Um, we didn't discuss it in this calculation, but the um, magnification is always one in these cases of refract refraction at a single planar surface. Um, just to make uh, a comment, so the shark was looking out of the water. That's where the shark lives in the water, which has a refractive index 1.33, 1, 1 and sees, sees me, or people, humans, further away than they actually are. We live in the atmosphere. So we live also in an optical medium. We're living in the atmosphere. When we look out into outer space, if we saw aliens, we actually see them further away than they actually are. They'd be closer. So the, the shark sees the humans further away because the shark is living in a higher refractive index atmosphere, the ocean. Uh, we see aliens further away because we're living in a higher refractive index than vacuum uh, atmosphere, the air. OK. Now let's get on to images formed by lenses. Like the case of images formed by mirrors, there was two types of uh, mirrors, concave, convex. Uh, images formed by lenses, there's going to be two types of uh, lenses, and there'll be diverging, converging lenses. So let me just introduce this terminology here. Um, upstairs here are three different predictions, predictions, depictions, of what are all converging lenses. And downstairs here are three different depictions of what are all diverging lenses. Converging lenses will bend light rays towards the optical axis. But when light passes through them, they're going to get, that light's going to get bent, refracted. It's going to be bent towards the optical axis. Diverging lenses, when light passes through a diverging lens, it's going to be bent, and it's going to be bent away from the optical axis. So there's these two basic classes, um, converging and um, uh, diverging lenses. The classic, OK, I, I put the classics over here on the left-hand side. This is the, these are the classics that we all know. This is a, a, uh, a converging converging lens, you notice that it's thicker in the center. That's the key characteristic. And it's thinner at the edges of the lens. Uh, 
The reverse is true for the diverging lens. It's thinner at the center and it's uh, thicker at the edges, at the top here and the bottom here. That's true of all of these shapes over here, but these are the classic sort of views of a, um, uh, of a converging lens and a diverging lens, where here you've got two convex surfaces, remember the mirrors, here you've got two concave surfaces, remember the mirrors. Uh, when light passes into the lens, it gets refracted once. When light passes out of the lens, it gets refracted a second time. So this is more complicated. We've got curved surfaces on the front and back faces of the lens. We've also got refraction on the front and back faces of the lens. So good luck. <laughs> OK. We said that mirrors, like people, have a personality. They, they have just one dimension of their personality. We have more. Um, uh, and it's their focal length. And it can be positive or negative, And it can have different sizes, being positive or negative. Same thing for lenses. Lenses have a personality, they have a one-dimensional personality, it's focal length. It can be positive or negative, and it can have different sizes if it's positive, or different sizes if it's negative. Um, and so lenses are characterized by a focal length. One way of seeing, this is a really nice way of seeing the focal length of a lens, is to shine parallel light rays into the lens. So if you want a source of parallel light rays, the sun is perfect. The sun is a perfect source of parallel light rays. Um, if we went outside, the light rays from the sun would be, all those light rays would be striking us. They would be stri running parallel to one another. So if you direct a beam of parallel light rays onto a lens, we're doing it upstairs here for the case of the converging lens. Look, it's uh, thicker in the middle. We're doing it downstairs here for the diverging lens. It's thinner in the middle. I've even got a little diagram of it over here on the right hand side. These parallel light rays that go into the converging lens are bent, they're refracted as we said. They get refracted at both surfaces even in this picture. Uh, they're refracted towards the focal point. And so this is a classic way of seeing the focal point. Stick a converging lens in parallel light rays from the sun. The, the, the light will be converged to a point. You know, when you're a kid, you're burning paper or your parents' house down by doing this. Um, and um, uh, that point that the light is converged to is the focal point. Uh, what about the diverging case? So the light rays head into the diverging lens. Remember, this thinner in the middle, thicker at the edges. It's, this light is bent away from the optical axis is bent away in a direction such that it appears to come from a focal point that's now on the side that the light approached from. So in both cases, the diverging converging lens, you can see the focal point by shining light onto the converging diverging lens. In the converging case, it bent, gets bent through the focal point on the refracted side uh, in the case of the diverging lens, it appears to come from the focal point on the incident side. Uh, converging lens, lenses have a focal length that's always positive. Diverging lens, a focal length that's always negative to reflect this fact. And it could be a large or small positive converging lens depending on how much or how little they converge. It could be a large or small um, focal length for a, a diverging lens, depending on how much or how little they divide, diverge. OK. In the case of the mirror, we had a little formula. It could have been called the the mirror maker's formula. We didn't call it that. It just told us how the focal length was related to the radius of curvature of the curved mirror. Uh, the focal length was half the radius of curvature of the curved mirror. So we could have said that the mirror maker's formula is that the focal length equals r over 2. But we just said it. We didn't name it. In the case of lenses, there's a similar equation that tells you how the focal length of the lens is related to the curvature of the faces of the lens. 
It's more complicated though, as you might imagine. Now with a lens, you've got a front and a back face. You've got two curvatures. We're going to have to call them R1 and R2. And also with a lens, you've got a medium, a material that the lens is made out of. It Maybe it's made out of glass, or maybe it's made out of ice, or maybe it's made out of plastic. So the, the lens maker's formula, unlike the mirror maker's formula, is much more complicated. Uh, the mirror lens maker's formula depends on the two radii of the two surfaces, the front and back faces of the lens, and depends on the material that the lens is, is made from. And I'm just quoting here the lens maker's formula. So this is the lens maker's formula. And you see that it tells you, over here is the, on the left-hand side is the refractive index. It tells you the refractive index, so it doesn't tell you the refractive index, gosh, uh, it tells you the focal length in, in, in terms of the, the, the three quantities that I said describe a, a lens. It's, it's front face's radius R1, it's back face's uh, radius of curvature R2, and the refractive index of the material it's made from, that's the N here. Now, um, I'll just make a couple of remarks about this formula um, that if, for example, you increase the refractive index, supposing we made the refractive index more and more, I, I make a, okay, I'm going to make a diamond mirror, a diamond lens. Oh, that would be a really large refractive index compared to a glass lens. If I make N big, it's in the numerator here, it's going to make F small because F's in the denominator here. So if you go home tonight, you make a diamond lens, it's going to have a very, a very small focal length, which means it refracts, it bends light a lot. It will converge light quickly towards the optical axis. Uh, another observation in, in this case here, if you make R1 and R2 the, the same, radii, so if you make the front face and the back face the same radii, then actually this piece goes to zero, you have an infinite focal length, which means you don't refract or you, you don't diverge light rays, you don't converge light rays. It becomes just like a sheet of a plain sheet of glass if you make R1 and R2 the same. Okay, let's move on from that, if I can. Let's, let's look at images formed by converging, diverging lenses. So I'm going to start with the converging lenses. And again, uh, I'm going to do ray tracing to find the locations of images formed by lenses, and then we're going to look at formulas for the location and the properties of images formed by, by these lenses. So this is the case of a converging lens. And just a reminder, this is the case where the focal length is positive for a converging lens. The lens in this sketch is right here in the center. It's thicker in the middle. It's thinner at the edges. That's a converging lens. The horizontal line that goes straight through its center, that's the, um, that's the optical axis again. The vertical arrow over here on the far, far left, that's the object. I labeled it with it o, o for object. We'll discover that this, um, this vertical arrow here in magenta on the right-hand side, that's going to be the location of the image and I, I labeled that with I. And we're going to discover the location of the image, knowing the location of the object, by tracing rays, by tracing several rays as they travel through the lens from the left-hand side, in this case, where the light is starting, to the right-hand side, in this case, where the light is going to. Okay, so uh, at that point, let's, um, let's try and do some ray tracing. Uh, before I actually start the ray tracing, though, uh, I'm going to add some helpers. Uh, I 
marked a point on the optical axis over here on the left-hand side, point over here on the optical axis on the right-hand side. These are the, the focal, they're, they're located at the focal length, focal distance from the, the center of the lens. So I'm, I'm, I'm marking those and we're going to use those. Here's an interesting point, actually. Uh, when, when we talked about the uh, converging, diverging mirrors, or concave, convex mirrors, um, and they had positive and negative focal lengths, when you were doing a converging mirror, you only need to, to work with the focal length on the front face of the mirror. When you are doing a diverging mirror, you only need to work with the focal length on the back face of the mirror. That's different when we work with lenses. We're going to work, although the, the, the lenses, diverging, converging lenses, have either positive or negative focal lengths, we'll use both the focal points on the front and back face for each of these types of lenses. So it's a bit different there. You have to be, I would say you have to be a bit more careful in your construction with lenses. So let's see how it works. Um, I got three rays here that I'm going to draw, and these are typ the typical rays that we draw. And I'm going to start with the most straightforward one. It's this one in, um, I think this is black here. It's the ray that starts from the object, the tip of the object and it heads towards the center of the lens. If you head towards the center of the lens, this is a special situation, head towards the center of the lens, you, after the refraction at the first surface, refraction at the second surface, you're actually undeflected. So that light ray, look at it, just goes straight through. That's an easy one to draw. Uh, so we construct that light ray. I normally do that one first. Warm, that's warm up. Uh, and then I move on to, you know, the cousins or the brother and the sister. Um, these ones involve traveling parallel in and involve the focal length on the way out or involve the focal length, focal point on the way in and parallel on the way out. Um, these are the ones that are a little bit different for mirrors versus lenses because they use the focal points on both sides for lenses. Uh, they use the focal point on only one side when you do a similar construction for mirrors. Uh, so let's trace these. Let's start with the blue one. The blue one heads in parallel to the optical axis. So here it is, horizontal straight line, parallel to the optical axis. It's going to, remember this is a converging lens, so it's got to be bent towards the optical axis. It's bent towards the optical axis, goes through the focal point. And so that's that ray. We've constructed that ray, and it's going down somewhere towards the bottom right over here. The other ray, the, other, the, the cousin, the red ray, that comes in. Now, it's going to come in using the focal point. So it comes in through the focal point. And then when it strikes the, the, the lens and has the two refractions, it's going to uh, head out parallel to the optical axis. So one's in parallel, one's out parallel. One uses the focal point on the way in, one uses the focal point on the way out. Um, what's key about these two rays is in this business of in or out parallel, using the focal point in or out, is that I've drawn them such that both converged. That's what I, that's what I ensured because this is a converging lens. Look, this blue ray is bent towards the optical axis this red ray was also bent towards the optical axis. The deflections in both cases were towards the optical axis. So be careful about, about doing that. Anyway, we've got these three rays now. We see that um, they, they actually pass through this common point here. And again, when I look at these three rays, as they emerge on the uh, back face of the lens, uh, my eye sees the three rays, um, my brain interprets where they're coming from, what common point on the image are they coming from, because they came from a common point on the object, and that point is here. And so this is the location of the image. We see a few things about it. We see it's on the other side of the lens than the object was. We see it's been inverted. Uh, it's upside down. Uh, we see it's um, also shrunk a little bit. Um, and we see it's closer to the lens than the object was to the lens. So we see a lot of properties immediately in the picture. Um, you'll not be surprised that along with the ray tracing to construct the properties of the image, there is um, also uh, formulas to construct the properties of the image, and here they are. 
the good news here is that these formulas are exactly the same formulas as the mirror case, the, the, the mirror equation and the magnification equation. Now they've become turned into the lens equation and, and, the, and magnification for lenses. So they're, they're exactly the same equations. The lens equation relates the position of the image and the object P and Q to the focal length. The magnification equation uh, relates the magnification to the uh, position uh, of the image and the object. So these two equations are exactly the same as the equations we met in the um, uh, last class. What day of the week is it? Uh, Tuesday, yeah. Uh, so last Thursday. You might wonder, well, how could it be, right, that the same pair of equations could work for the lenses, that they work for the mirrors? The way it works is really, really these, what's nice about these, what's nice and nasty about this pair of equations, they, they work for four distinct cases that we talked about. They work for diverging, converging mirrors, diverging, converging lenses. How do they work? How do the same pair of equations work for these four situations? The reason that they work for these four situations is that in each of those situations, the, the meaning of the signs of things, the, the sign of the, the focal length, or, or the sign of the image and the object positions are different. There's different conventions of the signs, different meanings of the signs for converging and diverging and lenses and mirrors. And so actually the four equations, the, the two equations work in all those cases because the signs mean something different. Okay. Let me show you uh, a demo. But I'm not going to show you a demo. I'm going to show you the, the, the demo is here. Um, but it's much clearer, I think, on the video. So let's do that. Let's take a moment to breathe. So in the video, I've got this device again that creates parallel rays. I've got three parallel rays, and they're heading from the device over here towards the right-hand side. They're like, inside there, there's probably just three pointers like this. Um, uh, and then they just sell it for $1,000. Um, anyway, we've got three parallel rays, and then I've got this little contraption in which I can fix different lenses in, in, in front of the parallel rays. And I'm just showing you these different lenses. This one, uh, I showed you already showed you two converging ones. This one's diverging because it's thinner in the middle and it's um, thicker in the edges. And I think I've got another one, yeah. This is a different diverging lens. Uh, it's also diverging, thinner in the middle and thicker in the ends, but it's um, not as diverging. There's not as big difference between the, um, the, the center and the edges. Uh, so now let's look at the case. I've turned the lights off. Um, my assistant turned the lights off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to insert one of the converging lenses. And you can see this beautiful way in which you can immediately figure out the personality of a lens. We've got parallel rays coming in, refracted at both surfaces. Notice that. They cross at this common point here. We can see the personality of this lens. It's not like humans, right? It takes a little while to find out the true personality of a human. Um, but with a lens, it's straightforward if you've got some parallel rays. We see it straight away. So that lens had a, uh, I don't know how far that was. That was about hand's distance away from the, um, the center of the lens. That's the focal length. I think I'm going to stop it there because now we go on to diverging. And I haven't talked about it. somehow disorientated myself now. Diverging lens. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to try and go twice as fast, but I, I never will. Um, I'm going to show you the ray tracing. Uh, I'm, I'll show you the formulas. 
and then I'll, I'll show you the demonstration. So it's exactly the same, same three steps. Um, but this time it's a, um, what am I on? Oh, no. This, this slide is slightly out of uh, place, actually. I don't know how, how I did this. Uh, one, I, I want to mention the, the features of the converging lens before I do the diverging lens. Um, the, the features of the converging lens, we'll see this a little bit later, um, uh, is that they can magnify and minify. So they can increase and decrease the size of an object. They can make real and virtual, uh, real and virtual objects. So they can make the image on both sides of the lens. And they can make up, both upright and inverted images. Uh, so they can do all these different things depending on where you put the object with respect to the lens. Uh, so they're very, they're very flexible, the converging lenses. They're kind of like the, um, the case of the um, converging mirrors. They could also minify and magnify. They could make an image that's upright or inverted, and they could make a, um, uh, they, they would make a, a, a virtual image or a real image. Okay, now I, want to, now I want to do diverging lens. Okay, so now I'm going to do exactly the same steps. The ray tracing, the formulas, and the, and the demonstration. Right, here we got a, um, a, uh, an arrangement involving a, a diverging lens. So right in the center is the diverging lens. Remember, it's thinner in the middle, and it's thicker at the edges. So that's what we're seeing in, in profile here in blue. Uh, right straight through the center of the diverging lens is the optical axis. Over here on the left-hand side, this is where the light's going to come from, is the object. I've labeled it O. It's represented by this green arrow here. Uh, we'll discover that the image is formed on this at this location here, represented by this magenta arrow. I've labeled it I for the the image here. So we're going to figure this out. Um, we're going to figure it out by drawing three rays, the same three rays that we drew in the, in the last case. Uh, again, to get started with the converging lens, diverging lens, I want to mark on the sketch the, the focal points, the focal distances from the lens. And again, I'm going to mark them on both sides. This is a difference between lenses and mirrors. In mirrors, we can just work with the, the focal length in front of the mirror for a converging lens and the focal length behind the mirror for a diverging lens. With lenses, you have to, you have to indicate them on both sides and work with them on both sides. So I've got these two focal points in gray over here on the left of the mirror of the lens, uh, in, in gray here on the right of the, of the lens. Right, we're going to construct the three rays. Easy one. The one I, this is my favorite. Uh, this one starts at the tip of the object, the tree, the person, the whatever, and it passes straight through the center of the lens at the location of the optical axis. This one passes through after the two refractions. It passes through undeflected. It's going exactly the same direction that it arrived at. So it just goes straight through. So that's easy to draw. Then we got the cousins the red and the green and the blue cousins that either head in parallel and come out using the focal point or use the focal point on the way in and then head out parallel. And so let's look at these. Um, blue one heads in parallel. So the blue one heads in parallel to the optical axis simply from the left to the right. It's going to get refracted at both surfaces here. I'm not drawing that carefully. Um, there is a net refraction, a net bending of the light ray. And I've drawn the, so this light ray's got to use the focal, focal point when I draw this. But remember, I've got to draw it such that it is diverging. It's bending away from the optical axis. I better not use this. I'm going to use the uh, focal point over here on the other side of the lens so that I can draw how it diverges. And so that's what I did here. If this was a converging lens, I'd use this, this right-hand focal point. But because this is a diverging lens, I'm going to use the left-hand focal point. So that's one of the pair. And then the other one of the pair is, um, is this red ray here. This one's going to use a focal point on the way in. And um, it's going to trap pa parallel on the way out. It's going to use the other focal point. 
just like in the prior case of the converging lens, one of these cousins used one focal point, the other one used the remaining focal point. The same is true here. One of them, the blue one uses this focal point, uh, and the red one's going to use this other focal point. So this one heads towards that focal point on the way in, and then it's bent parallel to the optical axis. This too, this refraction, is also diverging the ray, right? It was traveling towards the optical axis, now it's traveling parallel to the optical axis. So I've again made sure that I made that ray diverge. So I, I did a couple of things. Uh, I, when I drew these two rays, I made sure that they were diverging when I used the focal points. I also made sure that I used both focal points, one for one ray, one for the other ray. And we did exactly that for the converging case. We um, made sure that both rays are converging and we used both focal points. So now there's my eye. I collect this light through my um, cornea, the lens, the, onto the retina, goes into my brain, um, and I interpret where these rays are coming from. The common point where they're coming from is the location of the image, and that location, if I trace the black one back, the, the red one back, the blue one back, comes from here. And so this is how I've constructed the location of the image. It's right here. You can see that it's, um, uh, it's shrunk. It's reduced in size, it's minified, uh, it's upright, and it's closer to the lens than the object was from the lens. And that's actually a characteristic of con concave lenses, of diverging lenses. Of course, you know the story now. It's going to be the same pair of equations, the lens equations and the magnification, that describe the properties of the image that we formed. Uh, the first equation here relates the inverse of the object position, inverse of the image position, and the inverse of the focal length. Um, so it would allow us to tell us the image position if we know the fo focal length and the um, the uh, object position. And the second one tells us the magnification as the ratio of the image and the object positions, the negative ratio of those two things. Let me show you a demo. So here I am, I, I removed the converging lens and I'm inserting the diverging lens. Uh, thinner in the middle, thicker at the edges, and look at these rays. They diverged away from the optical axis. Well, the one on the optical axis goes straight through. The other two, one's diverged down the lower one, one's diverged up the higher one. You can see where the focal point is. It's somewhere back here. Again, it's about a hand's distance away from the center of the lens. So you immediately see the personality of the lens. I think I'm going to put in another lens here if I remember this uh, epic movie. Um, so this is the other diverging lens that I had. Now, remember, it was also thinner in the middle, thicker at the edges, but it, the difference wasn't so large. So this, convert, this diverges less. And you can see it here, right? This ray is slightly diverging. This one is slightly diverging. The focal length for this lens must be somewhere over here, somewhere way back up, probably over here, by the exit sign, something like that. So uh, a human, human's distance away from the lens. OK. Just trying to set the mood. Can't open the bar at the back yet. So, um, uh, and what have I got to do? I forgot to do something. Things about a d diverging lens. Unlike the conver converging lens that could magnify, diverging lenses can't magnify. They just minify. Uh, also, unlike the converging lens, it could make a real or a virtual image. 
That means that the image could be on the refracted size of the lens or the incident size of the lens. Um, in a, a diverging lens, the, the, the image is always virtual. It's always on the um, incident side of the lens. And then finally, the converging lens could make an upright and an inverted image, the right way up and the wrong way up. Uh, the diverging lens can only make upright. It can't make an inverted. So it only makes images that are the right way up and not the wrong way up. Here's a, um, a table that you'll get with the, the test three, because no, nobody, nobody can remember all these sign conventions. Uh, I, I for, for sure can't. I, I wrote them down on this piece of paper here when I came in the class just to try and jog my memory. But anyway, you'll get this table that tells you who's positive, who's negative um, for, um, for lenses, and you'll get the other one that tells you who's positive, who's negative for, for mirrors. So don't worry about remembering all these sign, sign conventions. It's not possible. I, apparently Einstein couldn't do it, and so we're never going to be able to do it. Okay, let's look at some applications, some examples of um, lenses. Oh, and we'll start with a quiz. It's easy. I'm not going to give you much time. <laughs> Let's compare the properties of the two classes of lenses, the converging lens and the diverging lens. Uh, the question is, about who can magnify. Can the converging lens magnify? Can the diverging lens magnify? Can they both magnify? So that's the question. And um, I'm not going to give you very long for that because I want to move along to some uh, more concrete examples. But I do need just to breathe for a moment. So I am going to rest. Um, Okay, so for lenses, con converging lenses can magnify. They can both magnify and minify. That's a feature of converging lenses. It was like converging mirrors. Those are con concave mirrors, are converging mirrors. They can magnify and, and minify. Diverging lenses, they, they only minify, they don't magnify. So you can't use them for magnification. Just like um, convex mirrors, uh, they also didn't um, magnify. You could only use them for, for, for minifying. And so the, those are features of, uh, of lenses and, um, and mirrors. It's really the converging ones that magnifies the diverging ones that don't. This is an example of a converging lens, and this is an example of using a converging lens as a, as a magnifying glass. Now, um, let me just introduce this uh, example 
by, by mentioning what we call the, the near point of the eye, right? Um, so if you, it was a small object. I don't have a small object. I'll use this, but I won't show that. I, okay, so the, there's some, a danger sign on the laser pointer. It says, uh, this, and, but I can't read it. So I, I want to read the uh, danger sign on the, uh, the, the, the laser pointer. So I'm going to bring it closer to my eyes to try and read it. But the trouble is when I get closer, some point I can't focus on it. So I still can't read it. And so even if I put the, the laser pointer and the little sign that I know says danger right close to my eye, I can't read it. The closest point I can get it and still focus on it is called the near point. The closest point that you can get it and still focus on it is, is this key near point. If you try and get the laser pointer or anything closer to your eye to focus on it, you cannot focus that light on, the, on your retina. The, the cornea and the lens in your eye, they just simply can't refract the light enough, bend the light enough to focus it on your retina. So that, that's a limitation in, in, in being able to see small things like small writing is, is um, your near point. A magnifying glass is a device that allows you to put something much closer than your near point. So this is much closer than my near point. It allows you to put a device, much, uh, an object much closer than your near point, but focus on it and be able to, able to read the writing on this object. So that's what a magnifying glass does. If, if I didn't have the magnifying glass, I'd have to uh, hold the, the laser pointer with its danger sign back here. If, if I have a magnifying glass, then I can hold it here and read it. And so that's that's what a um, magnifying glass does. And that's what we're going to explore. And just here's an example of it. Right? What it does, the way you use a magnifying glass, is that you put the object that you want to look at closer than your near point. And you wouldn't, without the magnifying glass, you wouldn't be able to focus on it. But then with the magnifying glass, it makes an image that's enlarged, but it's at the focal point. And so at the near point, so you can focus on it. And so that's how it magnifies. It, takes, it makes an image of an object that's closer than your near point and puts an enlarged version of it at your near point. And so you're able to read the writing that tells you what the danger is. OK, so here's an example of using a magnifying glass. We're told that a nickel is magnified with a converging lens uh, uh, if the image position is 25 centimeters, it's a virtual image, so minus 25 centimeters, and the focal length is 5 centimeters, we've got to find out the object position and the magnification. This is a classic example of using a magnifying glass. So um, we're forming the image at 25 centimeters, which is kind of um, at your age, that's probably where your, your near point is. That's the closest you can focus on. If I took my glasses off, closest I can, I can't even focus on the back of the room now. Um, but uh, when you're young, you can focus at about 25 centimeters. So we're, with this magnifying glass, um, we're, we're creating an image that's at that near point, the closest that you can focus on. And that's why you're going to see an enlarged version of the penny. OK. Well. So here, here's my calculation. Again, I'm not doing it. I'll go back to the um, uh, document camera, I think, next, next class. But I, I'm not doing it with the ray tracing. It's not possible. Um, I wrote down the things that I know. We're told that the image position is 25 centimeters, minus 25 centimeters. The minus sign is telling us it's a virtual image. The light isn't really coming from there. It's telling us it's on the back side. Um, it's on, uh, did I say this right? This, sh I should, this is wrong. This should be on the, the front, s front side of the light. It's where the light came from. No, that is the back side, sorry. See, even now I'm proving to you I can't get this right. 
Um, so that's why we need the, um, on the, on the uh, exam that you'll get the, the meaning of the signs. This is the backside. This is where the light comes from. And, and Q is negative on that side. It's a virtual image. Uh, here's the focal length of the lens. We're told it's five centimeters. Converging lens, so it's positive focal length. So this is the information we're told. I can just use the lens equation to figure out the location of the object to have the image at that location. And then I can just use the magnification equation to find out how much bigger the, the object is compared to the image. So, so we're just going to do those things. So if I look at the uh, uh, lens equation here, I know the focal length. I know the image position. I just got to figure out what the object position is. So I'm just going to rearrange it such the inverse of the object position is the difference between the inverse of the focal length and the inverse of the image position. 1 over f minus 1 over q. I fill in the f and the q. So I fill in for f 5 centimeters. 1 over 5 is 0.2. It's 0.2 inverse centimeters. I fill in uh, the value of q. It's, uh, it's 25 centimeters, so 1 over 25 is 0 0.04, is 0 0.04 inverse centimeters. I'm remembering you that it is negative. I've got to keep the negative sign here. So I got 0 0.2 inverse centimeters minus minus 0 0.04 inverse centimeters. This is a plus. A minus, a minus is a plus. And so this is 0.24 inverse centimeters. And that's the inverse of the Im object position. So I just got to take the inverse of that, and I get about 4.2 centimeters. And so the uh, object is much closer. It's just inside the focal length of, the, um, of this magnifying glass, of this, this converging lens. And that's exactly what you do. Um, so. If here, here's, a, here's a magnifying glass. So if I want to actually read this, right, um, I can focus on it here. I can't focus it on it here, but if I bring it here, I can focus on it here. Because what I'm seeing is the image of the object of the danger sign on the laser pointer uh, at 25 centimeters away, away from my eye. OK. I also drew a ray tracing diagram to confirm my calculation. One thing that's really easy to do, I try to stress it here, when you do these calculations with the lens equation, with the uh, mirror equations, is somehow get a sign wrong, right? You, you get a sign wrong, you either don't put in the right sign or you drop a sign. It's very easy to get the sign wrongs. Um, the ray tracing really helps confirm your, uh, verify your solution. It's a validation of your solution. So here's my ray tracing diagram of the um, uh, action of the magnifying glass. So this is the optical axis, the horizontal line. This vertical line here, this is the, um, this is the lens itself. This is the, co uh, the converging lens, its location. Uh, we said that the object, we figured out that the object was 4.2 centimeters from the lens. It was 0.8 centimeters inside the focal length. So these two crosses are the focal length. That's 5 centimeters. And here, at least approximately, is the object position. So now I'm working in reverse, right? I, I've, I started with the image location, and I calculated with the formulas the object location. But now I'm going to check it by working in reverse, starting with the object position that I calculated, and see if I get the image at that near point. OK, so uh, here's my object, and I'm going to draw three rays. The green one is that easy one to draw. It goes straight through the center of the mirror undeflected. So it's this ray here. And then we've got the, um, the blue and the red ones that are either in parallel, out parallel, and use the focal length, focal points, uh, on the other side where they're not parallel. So for example, the blue one goes in parallel. And I'm going to use this focal point on the right-hand side of the mirror to converge that ray. It's a converging lens, so this, this is converging. Uh, for the red one, it's going to be parallel on the way out on the front face of the lens. So I'm going to use the other focal point on the left-hand side of the lens uh, 
for its direction on the way in towards the lens. Again, I'm drawing it so that it's converging. That's the key thing here. Both the blue and the red rays are converging. In both cases, the rays are, uh, 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 are uh, deflected towards the optical axis. Okay, so now I've got my three rays and I can imagine my eye over here. That light passes into my eye through the cornea, through the lens, lands on the retina, those rods and cones, right? They send the signals into my brain somewhere and I interpret where those rays come from. I trace them back, so I trace the green ray back like this. I trace the blue ray back like this trace the red ray back like this, parallel to the optical axis. They all converge over here. This is where the image is located. And look, this looks to be about 25 centimeters, if this is you know, about 5 centimeters, behind the, um, behind the mirror. So this is at the uh, near point. It does have a large magnification. I didn't think I drew it perfectly, so it's not exactly the right magnification. It's not exactly the right position, but it's told me that I, I got the numerical solution right, that I did magnify, I do have an object, that's at, an image that's at the near point. Okay. Why can't you see in a swimming pool? I mean, you can't see in a swimming pool, but if you're underneath the water, why can't you see uh, when you're underneath the water in a swimming pool? Well, when light goes into your eye, I mean, I hate to talk about this because it's like, I know nothing about the eye. Um, you probably all know everything about the eye, and now I'm going to be the one talking about the eye. But when the, uh, light goes into the eye, it goes into your eye through the cornea, passes through a variable lens, an adjustable lens, and then heads the back through the aqueous, whatever, humor, towards your retina. So it's going through all these different materials, all these different optical materials. And uh, each of these boundaries between these optical materials, the light rays in general, are refracted. The light rays in general are bent. And the job of these different optical materials is ultimately to um, focus the light rays that started from a common point on an object to a common point on the image on the retina. In air, the big refraction, i.e. the big bending of the light rays, occurs when you go from air um, into the cornea and, and, and that's where you get the big refraction. And then there's a sort of adjustable refraction when you hit your lens. So you get a big refraction here. And that's what enables you to see a clear image of something either at a distance or as close as 25 centimeters. Now we're in the swimming pool. We're underwater in the swimming pool. Now, when you're inside the, 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 the water in the swimming pool, the refractive indices of the water and the materials of your eye are not so different anymore. They were very different when you're you know, uh, uh, standing by the swimming pool, but when you're underneath the water, they're, they're really rather similar. So now there's only a small refraction when you pass from the water into your eye compared to passing from the air into your eye. Because there's only a small refraction, um, that means that it's very hard to converge the light rays on the ret retina. It's very hard to focus. And so you, you see a blurred image when you're underwater. You can see a clear image up to as close as 25 centimeters when, you, when you're in the air. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to end there. I just want to remark that the magnifying glass that we discussed that uh, allowed us to see a clear image of something that's very close to our eye, uh, that's used, that is the key component in a telescope and a microscope. So if you're using, in your biology lab, if you're using a microscope, you have a little magnifying glass that you're looking through. Uh, if you use a telescope, you're also looking through a little magnifying glass at an, at an object that's nearby. The thing with the telescope and the microscope is it's some other lens calls an objective that produces the image of a distant object like a star, faint object like a star, or a nearby small object like a cell 
to be viewed in that little magnifying glass. So the magnifying glass example is the key component in a telescope, is the key component in a microscope as, microscope as well. And it is what opened up uh, modern biology, opened up modern uh, astronomy. Uh, we're finishing there. We've covered lenses, diverging, converging lenses. Think about the similarities, the differences with converging.